Did you know that in the United States, an estimated 100 million animals are used in research experiments each year? This includes animals like cats, rabbits, dogs, mice, and more. These animals are experimented on for various reasons, which may include product testing or scientific research. In addition to these animals, millions more are bred and sold for purposes of classroom activities at the high school and college level. Gross, right? But it's true. Cats, dogs, fish, mice, and more are bred in mass, then killed and preserved for dissection and other types of activities that are not necessary. People are often surprised when they learn about this, and they may assume that there are laws to protect these animals and that the use of animals is minimal. Unfortunately, this is not true. At the state level, there are only a handful of laws addressing dissection and cosmetic testing. According to the National Anti-Vivisection Society, there are only 22 states that have laws or policies protecting K-12 students from having to participate in classroom dissection, and there are no such laws at the college level. Only four states ban conducting animal experiments for cosmetic testing. California gets a gold star because they recently passed a law that makes it illegal to sell products tested on animals. Nine states have passed another pretty cool law called the Beagle Freedom Bill, which requires that labs adopt out some animals, such as cats or dogs, who are not killed or injured during experiments once the experiments are over. Fortunately, most animals die because of experiments they are used in, or they are used for multiple experiments and are too severely injured so they're deemed unadoptable and killed. At the federal level, there is only one comprehensive law that protects animals, period. One law. This law is called the Animal Welfare Act, or AWA, and it is the only federal protection for animals used in the industry from research to circuses to food to breeding and more. One federal law, that's all. I'm not joking, and get this. They have a different definition of animal than you or I may have. Many animals we would consider to be animals are not considered animals by the federal government. Here is their definition of an animal. The term animal means any live or dead dog, cat, monkey, non-human primate mammal, guinea pig, hamster, rabbit, or such other warm-blooded animal. But such term excludes birds, rats of the genus ratus, and mice of the genus mus, bred for use in research. It also excludes horses, who are not used for research purposes, as well as animals classified as farm animals, livestock or poultry who are being used for food or fiber. Okay, that was a lot to take in, but basically what this means is that most animals used in the U.S. for food, research, entertainment, clothing, or farming are simply not considered by our government to be animals. That means that there is no federal law to protect them, and some species of animal are only protected in some instances. When it comes to research, that means that while most warm-blooded animals like cats, dogs, monkeys, rabbits, guinea pigs, and hamsters have some basic protections, the animals most commonly used in research, mice, rats, and birds, have no protections at all. None. Zilch. Nada. It is estimated in the United States, anywhere from 85 to 90 percent of all animals used in research do not count as animals by the government. So there are no laws to protect them and no laws requiring facilities to on experiments they are doing on them, making it tough to know just how many animals are used in experiments each year. If this wasn't bad enough, the animals who are protected don't get many protections. It is even okay to do painful experiments on these animals and to deny them pain medication as long as the researcher can justify why they do it. Other awful things happen in these labs too, such as keeping animals in tight and cramped conditions or removing dogs' vocal cords so that their barking doesn't bother researchers. Some animals used in experiments will never even see sunlight, and many will suffer as they are shipped from breeding facilities to research facilities, often transported in crates like any other type of product. Sometimes the only comfort they have during shipping is the holes drilled in their shipping crate so they don't suffocate. They may be crammed in with other animals, not given food or water during shipping, and forced to travel in their own waste. Many of these animals will die during transport. Some animals are even captured from the wild and taken from their families before being shipped. This is all particularly frustrating given that studies show animal models often do not provide accurate results that will translate to humans. In addition, there are lots of alternatives to using animals that are more effective and reliable. Major universities, scientists, and other experts are trying to work within the system to get this information out there and change the research community. If you want to see more of that work, check out websites like AltWeb at Johns Hopkins University. But if we want this change, we need to have pressure from the outside too. 
so what can you do? An easy place to start is avoiding products such as household cleaners and cosmetics that are tested on animals. Look for these labels on your cosmetics to be sure they are cruelty-free or download an app on your phone that will help you identify cruelty-free products. If you're a student, you can refuse to dissect animals. If you don't get support from this, look around for a friendly teacher or parent who can help advocate for you. If you're an adult and a student wants help with this, be sure to do what you can to help. You can also put pressure on the places that do animal research and demand that their cruel experiments end. Follow groups like American Anti-Vivisection Society and National Anti-Vivisection Society and Progress for Science to learn more.